everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Addie. In today's video, I am going to take you through some of the activities that I use in my house with my three-year-old daughter to hopefully give you some ideas on what you can do as we're all kind of stuck inside because of coronavirus. I would say that these activities are good for ages one to five-ish, kind of that toddler preschool age but you can kind of cater them in difficulty to whatever age your child is in within that spectrum. So if you are looking for some fresh new activity ideas, keep on watching. Okay, so first up we have a puzzle sensory bin combination, and this activity involves hiding puzzle pieces from as many puzzles as you want for her age. I think three is good, and you can do harder puzzles or easier puzzles to, based on their age, but you hide the pieces in the sensory bin. In this case, I'm using rice, and then she goes to search for them and then finds which puzzle it goes to and puts them in its correct spot. But on occasion, you know, especially this one where you're taking puzzle pieces out of the box, there is rice that's going to get on the floor. And she is so good about usually cleaning it up. The next activity is an ice transfer. We have a sensory tray and she just has ice cubes and water with bowls, cups, funnels, all that stuff. And she just learns and does what she wants with that. The next activity is like I spy meets a crossword puzzle. You draw letters, numbers, shapes, whatever you're working on, on a large sheet of paper, and then one by one you have them circle what it is that you want them to find. In this case, circle the triangles with blue, and then so on. Next up we have painting, but painting for kids after a while, they can get tired of that. So if that happens, what I like to do is just pull random things out of our recycling bin and let her paint those because that keeps her entertained. And if you have nothing that you want to give them, you can always go outside and grab some rocks because rocks are another out of the ordinary item. It's better than just paper for them and it really provides a long time of entertainment. Here's a fun learning activity. You just take post-it notes and you write a capital or a lowercase letter on them and then give them a post-it note to try and match that letter, the corresponding letter. And you can do this a few different ways. You can do it just like you see here. You can hide them all over the room to make it last a little bit longer, however you want, but it's a nice fun way to use post-it notes. The next activity is water play, and in this particular video, she is doing a sink or float experiment. So she has put all the items that she thought were going to sink on one side of the sink, and all the items that she thought were going to float on the other side of the sink, and then she starts with one side and she puts them in and sees if she was right or wrong. After she did this, she decided just to pl keep playing in the water, and then she ended up taking a bath in the sink. So the act of just getting water out can somehow provide just so much entertainment. Here we have one of Isabel's favorite activities, shaving cream and paint in the bathtub. We just spray it on in there and let her go to town. She would stay in here for over an hour if we let her. Here we have a fun, upbeat learning activity where I just put letters, shapes, numbers, whatever it is we're trying to work on in masking tape on the floor, and then we kind of have a dance party. And when the music stops, I yell one of the shapes or letters or numbers, and she has to run and find it and stop on it. Here we have a water sensory tray, and I just have a couple drops of dish soap in a little tub, and she just goes to town washing her toys at Isabel's Toy Wash. The next activity is one that we do over and over and over again. It's find it in a sensory bin. It can be rice, it can be kinetic sand, it can be beans, it can be whatever you want. You just hide a couple objects in there and then give them a couple tools to scrape them out and let them go to town. The next activity is another sensory bin. This one is just plain rice in a bin and I gave her a funnel with spoons and cups and she just goes to town exploring and playing with her hands. The next activity has to do with water transfer. And so we just have two bowls on a tray and she uses a sponge to take water from one bowl and try to get it to the other bowl. Up next, we have an activity using poster board and push pins. And in this activity, I wrote two letters that we've been working on, but you can do shapes, numbers, whatever you want. And she just lined push pins over top of the design that I made. The next activity is really three in one. The first part being slamming the egg down and cracking it and rolling it. 
The second part being peeling the egg, and that is probably the hardest and most time-consuming part. It can also be the most frustrating part for a child, trying to get all the little shells off. And then the third part is actually getting to use the egg slicer and picking the egg up and slicing again into small little pieces. Up next we have a dot sticker activity and you can do this one in so many different ways. In this example I have just drawn a large wave across multiple sheets of paper and she is trying to put dot stickers over the line. So this just helps with fine motor skills and it keeps her entertained for so long. Oftentimes when she finally finishes she'll have me draw another line so that she can do it again. And you can do this with many different shapes and designs. The next activity is another favorite and that is making potions. I put a tray out with many different bowls filled with things like water, vinegar, dish soap, baking soda, cornstarch, food coloring, and she just mixes things and sees what kind of reaction it makes and she feels like she's making a potion. The next activity is shape sorting and you can choose whatever shapes you want. I've chosen square, circle, and triangle here. But I just go around the house, I find objects in those shapes, and then I tape those shapes on the ground, and she has to put each object in the shape that it belongs to. Up next we have cutting and gluing, and we just like to use many different objects and things to do this so that it's not just cutting paper, gluing to paper all the time. So here you can see she's using ribbon and bows, and that just makes it a little more exciting. The next activity I have is pipe cleaner play, and you can use pipe cleaners in so many different ways. Here you're seeing us put it through paper, but we also like to put it through oatmeal tins and spaghetti strainers and cooling racks. You can find so many different things to put pipe cleaners through. Up next we have sending cards, and in this case she's writing thank you cards because she just had a birthday, but we actually like to do this every once in a while just for fun, is to write a card to someone. It's an activity that we don't normally do anymore, we kind of have lost snail mail, but kids love to write on a card and put a stamp on it and send it in the mail, and then hear when they, someone received it. And especially with coronavirus, this could be a really great activity to start doing. And then I will kind of speed up through the next eight activities because they're probably things you're doing, but I just want to mention them and make sure that you know you have this in your arsenal. And you can even make them a little interesting. Like the first one you're seeing where she's just drawing. We gave her scented markers, so she gets to draw and smell at the same time. Then there's also Legos or Duplo or other kinds of blocks. You have kinetic sand, pretend play in the kitchen. She loves using a dry erase. This is a Melissa and Doug dry erase activity book specifically, but any kind of dry erase board would do. She loves to have dance parties and dance her butt off. Loves playing with chalk both indoor and outdoor, and the benefit of doing indoor is that you can also erase. She really loves to erase as well. And then definitely get your kids outside. That can just, just totally change the course of your day. Okay, so I hope you got at least a couple of new ideas of things that you can do with your little ones to keep them busy. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out, and I will catch you in the next video.